good morning uh, today I'm gonna try and run the Essex way it's a little unknown sort of uh, long distance trail but it's around 120 kilometers in total bank holiday weekend I'm gonna try and do it in three days I've got backpack on with my whole bivvy camping gear set up a couple of shops for restocking on the way and uh, it's a pretty beautiful day today it's a little bit nippy, a bit cold, a bit windy, um, chance of rain later but praying not because of the uh, because of the bivvy bag and we'll see how that holds up with all my new, new kit I've got so I'll talk through that a little bit later or at the end of the video anyway and then I might have to do a video on my uh, the actual kit I've taken with uh, everything like that so but uh, I'm gonna crack on and um, catch up in a bit First 5k done. It's beautiful, like in and out of the woods, weaving in between the big roads. It's like surrounded by private land both sides, so it's kind of fenced off. But it's the uh, path is very well signposted, very well kept. I'm quite surprised. I felt like it was a bit more off the beaten track, but that's a good thing. Uh, I'm also quite pleased it's reasonably dry because. For some reason I decided to run in my road running shoes rather than my trail shoes. Um, not really sure what went through the line there, but oh well, hopefully it doesn't rain. But here's the scenery. So it's pretty epic, not too busy, loving it, feeling good. <laughs> Just got through Chipping Ongar, which is uh, exactly 12 kilometers through. Just uh, stopped off, had a big sandwich and a, and a drink, a couple of other bits, just to keep me going. But uh, it's just such a beautiful day. Still a bit cold, but it's beautiful. Loving it.
we're at the 50k mark. Just had a serene more life. So good. Just, I was only going to have half of my night, the whole thing. Um, I was actually planning on staying around here overnight, but I, it's very cold, very windy around here. And we're just at the top. It's not really anywhere I can have found easy to pitch up. So I'm going on to the next stop to get some food and then hopefully find another place to stay. Um, but it's just sort of south of Braintree. It's going well, feeling good. Um, yeah, a bit nervous about the sleep this evening. I've uh, been a bit cold. And, uh, and maybe not feeling up to it to tomorrow. But, uh, it's just being honest. But I'm excited to get the rest of the day done anyway. So, thank you then. not gone to plan. I'm fitting off a bit more than I can chew. Uh, I've run out of water, run out of food. That uh, was 10 kilometers to the nearest shop I could find on Google Maps. So I've kind of had to call it. Uh, well, I've just, uh, just blown out really. And then it's uh, that as well as sort of the prospect of getting uh, incredibly cold this evening in my baby bag uh, with and then another 15k to onto the next shop it's kind of put me off a little bit so I'm making a sensible call to uh, to abort and reassess at another point but um, it's also I lost the route so I was just running along the main roads and no real real interest in doing that on an adventure like this so oh well and uh I'm just now making my way to uh, a train station to get home this evening. But on the plus side, that is the longest run I've ever done in one go, or run slash walk I've ever done. So I'm pretty happy about it. It's just a shame about the, uh, the weather forecast, despite the blue skies behind me, it is due to rain. So uh, that's all from me. I might do a little bit more filming here and there way back but thanks very much for joining me So here we are um, back at home uh, after what a, uh, a great run, but um, something that didn't go to plan. And I think that's pretty important when doing these sort of adventures is that you have to, you have to be flexible. You have to be able to adapt and um, change to your, your situation. And, and this is just part of the process. Everybody's, this has happened to everybody and you've just got to get used to it. Um, and learn from it, that's the main thing. But uh, I've really had a lot of fun doing it and it's definitely uh, in my mind is something that I'm gonna just use as a scouting out um, exercise and attempt this uh, long trail again. But um, today I thought I would run through my pack, what I had in there. Um, I try, I don't want to go into too much detail about what I've got, but drop in the comments if you've got any questions, if you want to know a little bit more. But um, the pack itself is a uh, decathlon, Quesha, don't know the name of it, 
Uh, it's discontinued now um, from um, Decathlon range, but it's 15 litres. It's kind of shaped strangely, quite triangular. Um, it's great for running. It's got a little waterproof pocket on the one side and then a little mesh pocket on the other side as well. And then a chest strap as well with uh, available, uh, you know, you can put a water bladder in it as well. So that's the pack. And then I'll sort of just run through that as well, what I've got in there as well. Great feature, sorry, about the pack is actually the zips go all the way down to the, or almost down to the bottom. So you don't actually have to unpack the whole thing, but you can access all your gear quite easily when laid on the ground. And then it's got two side pockets uh, with sort of elastic mesh as well on them, which is pretty good, as well as um, an exterior front pocket, just anything. Uh, you need snacks or anything like that in there. So in terms of a sleeping arrangement, I quite like to go minimal, especially when I'm running and things like that. So I've got my bivy set up here, a uh, few bits of new equipment that I'm really hoping to try out, but I um, obviously didn't manage to do that. So first thing is my rub, obviously packs down much more than this into a compression sack. Uh, my Rub uh, Ascent 300, um, so that's comfortable down to one, um, one, one centigrade and um, is around uh, 850, 860 grams. So really top notch sleeping bag, love it. Super sustainable and um, it's just amazingly comfortable once you get into that. Um, so that packs up really nice and small into the top of the backpack and on as well as my uh, so I've got my survival bivy uh, this is a Terra Nova one so again great quality some super light um, when I've got a, a bit of a larger setup here it's worth wrapping and just leaving the sleep bag in the bivy and then wrapping it all up into the compression sack in one go but it's tight it's more difficult because of the bivy to sort of compress that down a little bit more. But um, great bit of kit that, That's, um, I've done so many nights sleep in there as well. Um, new bit of kit for me, haven't actually tested it out, but only seen good reviews, great videos on there as well, is the uh, Sea to Summit Ultra Light. Uh, I've gone for the regular length, um, tried it out, in here, but it's, uh, as you can see, it's super, super small. Um, it's really lightweight and it's got a little pump sack as well. So, you know, after a long, long day on the trails or a long day on the bike, that's hopefully gonna see me through a good night's sleep. Um, then on top of that, I've got my, my stored on the outside of the backpack is a large camping tarp. This is super cheap off, uh, or just straight off eBay. It's not really camping, but it's it's this sort of green, so it's quite um, perfectly good for uh, for wild camping, being quite discreet. Um, so to tie that up, I usually have a couple of pegs and some, and then I use just some cheap bungee that again is straight off eBay that I've sort of cut to length, and it's. It's perfect, it's ideal. I've rigged some, some loops in the end and you can loop, loop that around some trees or anything like that and then uh, once you've found a suitable spot, it looks great for camping. So this is, um, this is a, a three by uh, six meters. So the reason for it being so big was that I can Obviously you fit over two people in there. You could fit three with a squeeze, but two comfortable with kit, um, or uh, certainly on bike packing trips. Uh, what's great about it is that you can fit your bike under there as well, or use the bike as a rigging mechanism as well for the top. So it's, again, see me through some, some cold, windy nights. Um, and I love using that, very attached to it now. It's pretty lightweight, it's super quick, up and easy to go if you need to pack up um, for whatever reason uh, early in the morning. Another super cool new bit of kit is my cooking stove or cooking um, cook set. 
Um, this is a Euro hike. Comes in this little um, little net bag just to keep it all, all together. Um, only downside I say is that the lid doesn't doesn't fit on top. It just sits on top. But um, I think in the in the stuff sack it, it seems to hold together okay. So in the uh, top compartment, I actually managed to squeeze in just sort of two little uh, porridge sachets um, just for keep going in the morning. And that just fits nicely into the top there. While in the uh, bottom, I've got some uh, wipes, keep myself uh, clean, especially after a long day running in the trails. And then in the bottom, I've got a BSR um, stove. If you haven't seen these, they're amazing. They just um, fold out and it's probably one of the lightest. It's, I mean, it's basically the lightest on the market and certainly for the price, it's absolutely fantastic. Under, under 20 pounds, so. Can't go wrong with it. And it comes in a little, again, a little uh, stuff sack as well. And then of course in there, I've got just a little uh, big lighter as well. Then in, uh, also contained within there is the, I've got a, just a small gas canister. Perfect for, for that as well, nice and small. And then of course a little washing cloth just to keep all the, all the dishes cl as um, clean as possible for that. Um, I just really wanted a cook set that was just as cheap, um, cheap and as, um, as cost effective, I guess, and as um, as small as possible just for one person. And that gas canister fits snug in there, um, wrapped around with the cloth, some washing um, wet wipes, and then my porridge. And that fits all nicely into there and into the stuff sack it goes. And then in the uh, evenings for sleeping, I've just got good woolly hat. It's a nice Carhartt one, so it keeps you really tight. Not nice and warm. Thermal socks, um, thermal leggings as well. And, uh, and then just some Running, uh, running new running socks, running tr uh, um, pants as well. But other than that, it would have been exactly what I was running in. So same shorts, same t-shirt, same long sleeve t-shirt uh, top as well. So really minimal on the clothing, and I think that's what really sort of gave me that anxious feeling of once I'd got wet and once I'd got cold. Um, and running out of water, of course, I, uh, I really started to panic about how cold and my recovery and how I was gonna feel in the morning again. Then on the outside of the backpack, I had um, a Solomon uh, little um, collapsible, foldable, however you wanna call them, I can't remember what they call them now, a uh, soft flask, so uh, I could top up or drop in some energy tablets, um, or hydration tablets, things like that. So that's, I, I never go without these for the weight and the size, but the benefit you get on them, it's just, just so, so good. Uh, and then of course, in the top, I've just got a little um, little med pack, just with really basic stuff. I wasn't going anywhere too adventurous. It was just on the trails. Just got some plasters, some savlon, and some um, the essentials for wild camping, uh, which would be toilet paper, just in case you get caught short. Uh, and then in terms of um, electronics, navigation, um, it was very well signposted. I'd done some research on the Essex Trail, so it was very well signposted, but I did have my um, Garmin eTrex 20 uh, device, which is super, super good for, for hiking. I use this as a bike computer as well. You can just um, plan your route however you want in GPX, upload onto here, and uh, it doesn't direct you, but it does um, give you where you are, where you're facing, and it can log all your route and everything like that. Um, 
But the reason why I use this on sort of all my adventures, the main reason is because it uses the AA batteries. Um, so I can use this all around the world. I don't need a charging point. If worst case comes to comes to it, I can just buy new batteries. Uh, often I'll carry well, at least one with me, uh, but not in this case. But um, I carry one with me just in case, just to uh, top that battery up if it needs to be. Um, then uh, on top of that, I have uh, just a really small lightweight uh, battery pack just to um, keep my phone charged because it runs out of battery so much, especially when it gets cold. Uh, so there's that and a charging cable, of course, as well. But other than that, that is the electronics other than this camera itself, which is the GoPro Hero 9 and um, the tripod that comes with it. So that's it for electronics, very much off grid. That's kind of what I enjoy. So, um, and then in the front here, I would keep all my snacks for today. Um, oh, sorry, did forget. Eating, of course, just got a simple spork. Um, I think this one is, this is a light my fire, but you know, a couple of quid, nothing too special about that. Um, but I've ordered a new collapsible one, I'm hoping it'll fit inside my cook set as well. Well, the last thing, I have in my list, which I typically do take on most of my adventures, um, because I like to travel very lightweight, there's not often a lot of excess space in my pack. So even when I'm bike packing, all my kit is packed out. There's not a lot of room in there extras. For instance, so for here, I haven't got any food, any lunch food or any dinner food, but I've got my, dinner, my cook set for dinner. Um, tend to have a cold lunch or a pub lunch or something like that, but uh, in the evening, it's nice to sit there, have a coffee or um, or a beer, and you need to be able to carry that food. Um, so this is actually just probably one of the best purchases I've got, which is um, an ultra compact 10 liter backpack from Quesha. And it folds up you know, into this tiny little sack. And it just, um, and this you can fit all that stuff you need, all that, dinner food, breakfast food, couple of beers, you know, it's got no thrills to it. It's the lightest sort of backpack, um, but it's seen me through some, some tough times, I guess. When I'm really, really hungry, you can fit it all in here if you really need to. But um, that's it for my kit list. I'm not gonna go into any more detail than that. It, um, it weighed at a total of about six and a half kilograms. Um, I think the only sort of thing I could really go lighter on would be um, would be the, the, the actual tarpaulin, which is quite a weight. That's probably a, um, just under a kilogram in itself. So um, that I am looking at getting maybe a smaller tarp or even if you were brave enough um, in the UK, not so much, certainly in spring, uh, but you could just go without the actual tarp itself. Um, and then of course the, the actual backpack is probably not the lightest. It's, um, I think it shows here, it's 680 grams. So it isn't the lightest of backpacks, but it's done me through some, um, some great runs, done the, um, the Great Glen Way uh, from Inverness, uh, some, from Fort William to Inverness with this on. Um, and that was absolutely fantastic as well. So can't fault it, but sadly being discontinued. Um, but thanks very much for um, watching my video. Uh, been a little bit tough time to upload it, but I'm um, looking for some new adventures uh, moving forward. So if you like this video and want to see some more, maybe my next attempt at the Essex Way, then uh, why not hit subscribe, give this video a like. And um, if you want to know any more about the kit I've got um, or how I start going around planning these trips or looking into them, then um, please hit me up in the comments section and I'll be happy to, uh, to, to let you know.